Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Group Exhibit 2018. You're here with me today at the Technical Forum. I invite all of you to please take a seat, enjoy a coffee, water, juice on us while you listen to our next presentation. Our next topic will be co-electrolysis for carbon, di uh, car carbon dioxide neutral production of valuable products. Here speaking with us today, we have the Head of Department of Materials and Components at the Fraunhofer Institute for Ceramic Technologies and Systems, Dr. Mihail Kuznetsov. I hope you all enjoy what I'm sure will be a very interesting presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Well, I want to uh, give an introduction about our activities in field of core electrolysis and especially with the goal of generation of valuable products or chemical products using special mix of CO2 and steam. And if we have also renewable electricity, then we can produce this, pro using this process, we can produce chemicals with CO2 neutral technology. At first, I want simply to explain at the beginning what we mean by valuable products production from steam and CO2. The only technology which allows to produce active materials from CO2 is electrolysis. So there are different paths for this, and I will show you afterwards the difference. But our path is pretty direct. So we try to mix CO2 and steam and put it directly to the electrolyzer. And it is possible for high temperature process. I will also give you introduction how we use the gas coming from electrolyzer for chemicals production. Let us start with two different options. The first option is a low temperature option where you produce by electrolysis only hydrogen from steam. This is the upper one. And the second option is more simple. This is the option below where we mix steam and CO2 and in electrolyzer we generate synthetic gas which we use later for chemical processes. What type of technology we need to convert CO2 and steam to synthetic gas? This type of technology is called solid oxide cell. It is well known from the process of solid oxide fuel cell and this generator can be used in a reverse mode to produce chemicals or synthetic fuels. It means at our institute we develop the core technology which is the stack and now we are active in transferring this technology to the market together with company Empower located in Dresden and we are active especially in field of integrating of such stacks in the systems because at high temperatures, it is not so easy to integrate stack in the system in comparison to low temperature. So we are working on hot boxes or stack modules in different sizes for different power ranges. Now, the components of our converter are very simple. They are very similar to every electrolyzer. So we have bipolar plate, we have cell and cell is based on ceramics and it is a reason why ceramic institute is very active in this field like IKDS and then we have several active layers some of them are for protection of oxidation of interconnect and some of them are for electrical conversion and the layers which we use for electrical conversion are called electrodes now about what we have inside the materials which are, we are using as a raw materials are special powders. And we have powders for different functions. Protective functions, electrode functions and sealing functions. We have contact layers, glass sealing and electrodes. 
after we have produced every component, we put them together. It is assembling or stacking process. So for stacking process, we build a repeat unit consisting of different components and put these repeat units one on top of the another. You can imagine that this process can be easily automated. After that, we should go for high temperature. The reason for this is that we should seal all repeat units in one unit called stack. For this, we put stack in furnace heat it up to the ceiling temperature and make initialization. During initialization, we have different steps. The first, we put all repeat units in contact to each other. And the second is, we prove that the contact is perfect, there is no cracks in the cell, and we have proper power or contacting of every layer. And the last step is to test such stacks for their power. The difference between fuel cell and electrolysis operation is that you need another cell. We are using electrolytes, electrolyte supported cells. It means if we change the structure of the electrodes, then we can move from reliable fuel cell operation to reliable electrolysis operation. Here you see example of the cell performance we have developed during last years in comparison from steam operation to steam CO2 operation. And we have only minor difference in energy consumption. Here I want to show you again this small difference if we consider power pro repeat unit in the stack. So you see there is only 2% of difference if we change steam to steam CO2 mixture. And it means we can very efficiently convert our steam CO2 mixture to, uh, uh, to, to the synthetic gas. We can also answer the question about durability, because this is a main problem. Such units should run for many tens of thousands of hours. And the stack is a main component, the most most important and expensive component. And we should always enhance the durability. Now we are in the range of 0.5% per 1,000 hours degradation. We should reduce it below 0.3 to get on reliable commercial level. And we are working in this direction and especially development of electrodes and protecting layers are important for reducing the aging of the stack. Now I simply come to the Next step, it is synthesis. So if we have produced synthetic gas, then we should use it to produce some chemical products. We are concentrating on the high hydrocarbons, higher alcohols and waxes. Diesel is not so attractive because it is a common product with a low price. And I will show you some disadvantages of producing common products in the future. The problem is, by conversion, it, it, that it is high exothermal reaction, and we should manage the heat flows in the system. But first, we should start with our catalysts, because you should have a system which can very selectively produce your chemicals. Normally, you get some spectra of chemicals, but you want to have one special chemical. And we are on high temperature region. It means that we try to use iron-based catalysts. Here it is a picture showing the selectivity of iron-based catalysts at different temperatures. And we see that 200 degrees C is somehow optimum to get the selectivity for alcohols. It's a blue line. If we dope of iron with different additional elements, then we can even increase the selectivity. For example, with doping by calcium, we have higher selectivity. With doping by copper, we have a little bit lower. And these are elements we are playing with. There are also another elements, but it's only to demonstrate in what direction we can move. Now we are speaking about the whole system. And Every reactor is important, but they should play together in the whole system to reach high efficiency. 
here we again come back to the heat management because in this system we should have an advantage of steam using not of liquid water and for this we need heat for evaporating the water here you have two examples for using of retail gas which is recycled from the process because you don't have 100% selective conversion and you see that in the way how you recycle it can influence the heat losses in the system and if we or heat management if we are assuming some realistic heat losses in the system then you see depending on how you manage your heat in the system you can get different overall efficiency and the red line is the best one the uh, dark line is a little bit worse and if we compare it to the system where hydrogen and CO2 is mixed at low temperatures and assume realistic heat loads losses for this system then we see that high temperature electrolysis is from efficiency point of view better option now a few words about the costs why high value chemical products and the reason is for that that to become economically feasible we should address markets for chemicals which a little bit with a little bit higher prices and gasoline and diesel unfortunately have a common price which is too low to compete with them using this process so you should go for some selected chemical products with higher value to be competitive on the market so there are there is a summary I don't want to go through the all points and repeat what I have said be uh, before but you see that this technology is rather promising and you can maybe in the future use it for very efficient conversion of co2 to the chemicals and other products thank you for your attention Thank you so much for that presentation, Dr. Kuznetsov. At this point, if we have any questions, I'd be happy to take them so we can all hear, hear any of the answers. All right, well, well people are thinking. Uh, you mentioned during your presentation that you expect about a 0.5% degradation of your stack over, yeah. per, was it 1,000 or 10,000 hours? 1,000 hours. For 1,000 hours. Yeah. Uh, would you expect that to continue to be a linear degradation, um, or do, would you expect to see a sharper drop-off once the uh, fuel cell gets a little bit older, has more hours on it? Yeah, it's a linear degradation. Um, there are different mechanisms which are causing the degradation. One of them is coming from productive layer, and it means that we simply have growth of oxide scale on interconnect between protect protective layer and interconnect. And then another one is coming from the degradation of the cell electrodes. But I wouldn't, don't want to go into details of the mechanisms. Right. But if you have interest, then we can discuss it after. Great. Thank you. So if there is uh, more interest, I'm sure Dr. Mich uh, Dr. Kuznetsov will be available to talk with you all. Um, he can be found at booth E49, um, which is the Fraunhofer Institute for Ceramic Technologies and Systems. So thank you all for your attention, and thanks once again for that presentation. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs>